Hello, my name is Roland Lichters. I'm the co-head of Acadia's Quantitative Services Division. I welcome you today to my introduction to the Open Source RISC project. This project is sponsored by Acadia. It has been started to establish a transparent framework for modern pricing and risk analysis with software released as open source. This software is called Open Source RISC Engine and we will refer to it as ORE in the following. ORE is free of charge, with a wide scope that covers many requirements out of the box, such as pricing, XVA, market risk analysis and credit exposure simulation. And where it doesn't suffice, it is fully extensible. These days, ORE feeds both Acadia's IM Risk Generator service and our expert services. From an IM Risk Generator perspective, ORE covers requirements such as CRIF generation, SIM backtesting and benchmarking, or capital optimization. And from a consulting perspective, ORE can be used in model validation and even training. Stay tuned for the next 15 minutes. I will use the first half of the presentation for a brief history and overview, and the second half is devoted to getting, using and extending ORE. The Open Source Risk Project's origins go back to the early 2000s, when I had responsibility for a bank's market risk team and IT systems. We had to deal with a steady stream of new product requests around interest rate exotics, credit and inflation derivatives, which needed integration into our risk management processes. Our off-the-shelf systems at the time weren't able to cover these products, which is why we started exploring the development of own software. The first motivation was closing product gaps, but a second motivation was already the desire for a modeling framework that is entirely transparent and can be used to validate black box vendor software. Rather than starting entirely from scratch on this mission, we decided to build upon the Quantlib project, which was launched in late 2000. We spent years with familiarizing ourselves with the Quantlib library and its design, and then extending Quantlib for credit and inflation derivatives, and finally convincing our CRO at the time to buy into our mission to build risk analytics around Quantlib. This led to the nucleus of our risk analytics software by 2007. Following the 2007 and 2008 financial crisis, our focus moved to structured credit products and credit value adjustments for quite a while. And the idea emerged during that time to set up Quaternion and provide risk analytics services to more clients shaken by the crisis. After founding Quaternion in 2010, our focus was on exposure simulation for credit risk capital and XVAs, much driven by consulting engagements with investment bank clients. This pushed our development of a Monte Carlo simulation framework and scenario machinery that also supports sensitivity analysis, stress testing and historical simulation. The documentation of the methodology applied in our software then led to the publication of our book in 2015, Modern Derivatives Pricing and Credit Exposure Analysis, that we still regard as a methodology reference of ORI. And shortly after that, we decided to release part of our code base as open source, and we finally did in 2016. We have often been asked why we released our software. Isn't it dangerous to give it away? We don't think so. First, Quaternion is not a software vendor. We are a risk analytics service provider with a hybrid strategy firmly grounded in expert consulting services for our clients, with a software offering that proves our expertise largely free and, to be honest, with some elements that we license to clients and partners. And second, we deeply value transparency. We have benefited a lot from Quantlib and ORE is a way to give back. And we are convinced that there is demand for transparent solutions in our industry, not only because of our own painful model validation experiences in the early days, but because of increased regulatory pressure following the 2008 financial crisis. So far we have had annual releases with the latest version in June of this year. ORE development continues also because it is the core of our own proprietary software called ORE+. Let me summarize for you what ORE is. It is a pricing and risk application for the end user, 
that you can download and use out of the box without any development. It comes with transparent interfaces for trade data, market data and system configuration. It comes with various examples that make it easy to start using it. And it comes with detailed documentation on usage and methodology, the ORE user guide. ORE's analytics are broad, covering pricing and cash flows, sensitivities and stress testing, parametric VAR, a Monte Carlo framework for simulating exposure evolutions with netting, variation and initial margin, and finally the calculation of a range of value adjustments from CVA to MVA. ORE covers standard derivative and cash instruments across six asset classes. ORE is open source. It is released under a permissive license, a modified BSD license. What it means? Use it for free, copy it, amend it without publishing changes. You can even incorporate it into your own commercial software. And because all of this, it is an extensible foundation for tailored pricing and risk solutions that you can build on top of ORE. An increasing number of firms is using ORE in their daily business, in model validation and production. Use cases that we are aware of include derivatives valuation, valuation of structured loans, the calculation of netting set value adjustments and CSA pricing, which is analyzing the impact of changing CSA details on netting set value adjustments. Another use case is collateral requirements projection. And finally, even interest rate risk management across an entire bank's portfolio. Some of these use cases are disclosed. See, for example, the presentations of the first ORE user meeting on opensourcerisk.org following this link. ORE plays a central role. It supports model validation projects. It is blueprint for tailored client solutions. And finally, it is core part of services we develop and distribute with partners. With ORE, Acadia has released a large part of its code base, but not all of it. We have our own extensions called ORE Plus, also under active development. It is another use case of ORE and a demonstration of ORE's extensibility for industrial scale application. Our extensions so far cover three broad areas. A wide range of additional financial instruments beyond the standard OTC derivatives in ORE, from equity FX commodity exotics to hybrid scripted products. Additional analytics, market risk, P&L, backtesting, initial margin, standard credit risk capital and market risk capital calculation and techniques for performance enhancements including American Monte Carlo and algorithmic differentiation. And finally, integration, a framework for embedding ORE or ORE Plus functionality into web services. How does that work? An analytics service based on ORE sits in a Docker container. When the container is spun up, it launches a server that listens on a port for requests. A user can send analytics calls to the server via HTTP. The service processes the request and returns a response to the user. Thus it is possible to launch multiple analytics service instances for parallelization and applying ORE or ORE Plus at industrial scale. One use case of all these extensions are the ISTA SIM related services for CRIF generation, backtesting, benchmarking ISTA SIM. This concludes the general introduction to ORE. The following few minutes are about physically getting ORE and working with it. So, if you want to explore ORE on Windows, the easiest approach is getting the pre-compiled ORE application. Open your browser, navigate to opensourcerisk.org, click on menu item view on GitHub to see the open source risk GitHub repositories. Go to the engine repository and download the zip archive of the latest release. When you unpack the archive, you will find the ORE executable in the folder shown here. This encapsulates all of the ORE functionality I have mentioned in the introduction. I will show on the next slides how to use it. 
to explore ORE on any other platform other than Windows, such as macOS or Linux, you need to build ORE from its sources. You can of course build on Windows as well. Detailed build instructions are provided in the ORE user guide. You find the user guide on opensourcerisk.org under menu item documentation and then follow the steps in section 4, getting and building ORE. Once you have downloaded or built ORE, how to use it? To run the ORE program, you call it on the command line simply like this. With a single input file called ORE.xml here that tells ORE what to do and where to find the relevant inputs. Try it on one of the examples provided in the release, say example 1, which is a textbook exposure and CVA calculation for a single uncollateralized interest rate swap. Navigate to folder example 1 and call ORE as you can see here. This process would take about half a minute to complete. Let us look at the ORE process flow on the next slide to discuss. To run ORE, we need to provide three types of inputs. Trade data is represented in ORE XML format. Its definition and explanation is a key part of the open source risk project. Please check out the ORE XML introduction webinar given by Scott Sobolewski. Market data is provided in a simple three column CSV file format, one market point per line, with a unique naming convention explained in the user guide. And system configuration. It consists of a set of XML files that contain conventions, determine curve configurations, market and model compositions, also explained in detail in the user guide. In the first stage of ORE processing, ORE loads the portfolio and prepares analytics runs by building curves and calibrating models. In the second stage, ORE executes analytics, depending on the configuration chosen by the user. This can be limited to pricing, cover market risk related analytics, or the more time consuming simulation based analytics. Results are generally written as CSV file reports and stored on the file system. The general modular process illustrated on the previous slides covers many use cases. The ORE release examples illustrate this with its 30 cases so far around pricing, exposure and XVA, market risk analysis, and the detailed user guide moreover explains the various ORE inputs and provides a summary of methodologies applied in ORE. The raw results of ORE processes stored as CSV files can be post-processed and visualized in several ways. In the ORE release we provide Python tools for plotting results like these exposure evolutions that you find in many of the example folders. Jupyter notebooks that interact with ORE via its Python language bindings and allow coding, documentation and visualization in one place. And dashboards like the one we provide with the ORE release. The users are invited to build their own visualization, building upon these tools provided in the release. Since ORE is open source, and because of its permissive license, you are invited to take ORE and tailor it to your needs. What does it mean? Addition of new instrument types, pricing methods, analytics, this all needs C++ quant development on several of the dark blue components of ORE. And moreover you may want to integrate ORE into your organization's processes and systems and automate interfaces. This can be facilitated by ORE's language bindings, which allow using a subset of ORE classes and functions in Python and Java applications. Acadia's Quant Services team is available to help in this process. Our experience with ORE and Quantlib makes us quite efficient in our support. Or look at ORE Plus and License Components. 
we would be very grateful if part of such extension work would find its way back into the open source release via pull requests on GitHub. Contributions are very welcome. As administrators of the open source risk project, we ensure that the contributions are incorporated into the bulk ORE and then maintained over the sequence of annual releases. Let me summarize. We hear from clients that the free ORE covers many requirements out of the box. Since it is open, you can tailor it and extend it and build your own ORE Plus on top of ORE. I really encourage you to explore it and would be grateful to hear feedback and see contributions to the project in the future. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this introduction. Have a great day.